Hi everyone, it's Sarah here, head magic maker at the Sisters Enchanted, where it's our mission to make magic mainstream. And we are wrapping up our, ooh, I'm dropping papers, our uh, magical healing for 2019 little series here over the last few days. So let me see here. I'm having some tech troubles. Oh good, Renee, my tech is troubles appear to have dispersed today so that's awesome uh hello renee and anybody else watching happy new year welcome to 2019 our year of joy creativity personal manifestation all of that good stuff um so what we have been talking about is how to heal in 2019 sorry something's in my eye i was just moving furniture around and it all dust combobulated um hi other uh, hi Robin, happy new year. So we've been talking about uh, 2019 as a three year and what that means for magical healing and all that good stuff. So basically, as a three year, this year numerologically is primed for, for joy, creativity, passion, desire. And when we live from that place, we become the best leaders of our lives that we can be. If we aren't living from that place, we might see a lot of rubbish dumped on our doorsteps that we don't want to deal with. And it's that comes from us not living from that place of joy, that, that place of being the leader, the driver's seat of our own lives, right? So that's why we're talking about this magical healing. And what we've talked about is looking at like a big picture thing that would make your life significantly better or that you feel like would make your life better and taking a little piece of that that you can start working on and start healing right away. When we look at something really big like self-care, money, relationships, that's a huge thing to take on and healing that big area is like, you know, I'll just say probably pretty impossible all in one shot. But if you can choose one little piece, that first domino to push over, you're going to be a lot more successful. And that's kind of what we talked about over the last week or so. We talked about using journaling as a magical technique to, to heal that little area of your life. We talked about meditation, movement, and intentional creation, and putting that all together to magically heal in 2019 when all of this amazing stuff is, is, uh, is primed for us. There's a lot of this like Capricorn energy happening this year um, where there's going to be lots of uh, like um, opportunity for big changes in, in areas of your life that are long and lasting and stable. Um, Jupiter is in Sagittarius all year long until December. So there is abundance galore. Anybody here who's a Sagittarius, I'm a Sagittarius. Jupiter, that's its home sign and Jupiter loves to be there. So if you're Sagittarius, <laughs> make the most of this year and step into your joy. If you are not doing that, you know, the, you will you will get an abundance of things you don't want, right? So we want to heal an area of our life that's going to bring us um that's going to bring us much more joy. Hey Sharon. Happy New Year to you. Sharon, I was telling people about you the other day. Sharon is the most magically, I'm inspired by just seeing Sharon's name on here. Um, hi, Nick. Mm. Mugs will be shipping out, and we've got lots of this lilac color in the new style and the old style, if anybody wants one. P to the S. All right, so today what we're going to do, I'm going to have you do a little exercise, which I did not prepare you for. <laughs> So if you're watching this live, if you want to grab a piece of scrap paper, if you're in the kitchen, what time? It's 4.30 here, so it's like 9.30 in the UK. If you're sitting in bed, I don't know. I'm a big scrap paper junkie. I, you guys don't want to see. I actually took a picture of my office area to share with some people um, <laughs> because it's crazy. And I just added in a second desk for our new behind-the-scenes enchanted sister who's helping us out. So um, anyway... Uh, Kristen says, woo, woo, bring on the Sag Abundance. I hear you. That's what I want to. Okay, so grab a scratch piece of paper, um, big piece of paper, whatever you have. Mine is, I have, I just um, did it quick while I was getting started on the back of a packing slip that was um, double printed. So <laughs> not using. You need a piece of paper or something to write with. Scatter, gather your tools, come back. Okay. <laughs> so what you're going to do on this piece of paper is make eight circles with a ninth circle in the middle. 
Um, the number eight and well, number nine is the, is a super magical number, right? And it's three threes. So it's like the most abundant of three numbers. We also here in the magical community, the witchy world, we work with the eight phases of the moon and sometimes the ninth, if you work with the dark moon phase, which is like a whole other topic that we don't need to get into today, <laughs> but there's either eight or nine moon phases, depending on what you work with. So we have here eight circles on the outside with a ninth circle in the middle. Let me hold up the paper so that's so if you don't see the packing. So let's see, eight circles, eight with number nine in the middle. All right, so the eight circles on the outside, you're going to write in each of them um, a word, like one or two words. I'm going to tell you what these words are. So one of them, you're going to write friends and family, love in another one, creativity in the third, spirituality in the fourth, money and career in one of them, or money and or career, you know, because like you need a career to have money, <laughs> usually, unless you're the descendant of a Rockefeller, in which maybe we can be best friends. <laughs> Just kidding, not. Um, lifestyle in another one, community, and self-care in another one. So I'll, I could post a picture of this later too, I will. So friends and family in one of them, love, creativity, spirituality, money and career, lifestyle, community, and self-care. And that's what you want in your outward circles. So we have all of these areas of our life, right? And what we can do is look at these and we can look at them and kind of think to ourselves, like, and I have a couple different colored pens here. I totally should have warned you guys we were going to do this, but the idea came to me like in the middle of the day. So, <laughs> and I'd already sent the email. So I was like, ah, we're just going to roll with it. Okay. Um, so I have two more colored pens here. So I did mine in purple and I have a black pen and a green pen here. Um, so I like green for abundance. So what I'm going to do and what I would challenge you to do, um, so Heather said, so like the, the Ula I was just telling you about, I don't I don't, oh, the, what? I'm confused, Heather. Um, Happy New Year, you said. I think maybe I, I lost something in the, I think I lost something in, in the conversation here. Um, okay, so in, or you posted something and I didn't see it yet. That could be it too. I haven't been on Facebook in a couple hours. I don't know. Anyway, um, okay, so with my green pen, I'm going to go through these and I'm going to write down well, I probably won't do it all right now because it's going to take some time, right? But I would look at them and I would write down like what is really, oh, in another thread. Okay, yeah. So I haven't seen, I missed that. So I'll have to look and see, but it sounds like maybe that it's similar. Um, okay, so I would write down with these in my green pen I'm going to use. I like green for abundance and all that good stuff. So I would write down like what is really abundant in that area for me? What feels really good? What's really high vibe? Like what does not need to be healed because it feels really amazing? So like for me, um, self-care, uh, something for me that feels really good there is, um, hi Natasha, happy new year, is um, you're in Australia. You're like, you're past the new year. <laughs> you're like, I'm already in the thick of 2019. It's good. Um, so self-care, something for me that feels really good is typically um, being able to buy the food that makes me feel healthy. It doesn't mean I don't eat junk food. I certainly do. But I don't have a problem with buying food that like feels good and is healthful to me. I have an abundance of resources around here for that. So like for me, in terms of self-care, like uh, eating well would be something that would go in green for me. Like I have that abundance. I, you know, I'm going to keep up with that abundance, hopefully. Um, let's see here. Spirituality. I obviously have like an awesome community of like-minded people. So like, I, you know, I'm not alone. So that feels good. And these are just off the top of my head, like sitting alone and thinking about it. There'd probably be like more sorts of things going on here. Um, let's see here. Lifestyle. I love to travel and I get to travel, uh, pretty much like whenever I want. So that's going to, that's going to sit there with lifestyle. Lifestyle can be like 
your home, your, the things you do, like, to, like traveling, um, eating out, like, like I said, the place you live in, when you do do things, the kind of places you go. So maybe like, um, you, you are, uh, like, like if you feel like you can't, maybe you have the money to go on a vacation, right? But you never want to spend it because you're like deathly afraid of dipping into your savings account or you're like, so afraid that something's gonna happen that you don't enjoy time ever out. So like that would be an area that needs to be healed, you know, for lifestyle. Anyway, so go through these and look at what your what's abundant in those areas for you. So community can be your your direct in-person community and how you're contributing to community also. Because that makes us feel really good to contribute to community, which is something that I don't do enough. I keep wanting to get really involved with um I don't know if you guys have heard of Spiral Scouts at all. It's like Girl Scouts or Cub Scouts or something, but with like a uh, a like pagan, <laughs> it's like a pagan foundation. Um, I think they're actually associated with the the like um, the group that's kind of behind uh, like the the Wiccan like a uh, like chain of um, community like established communities I think actually which I'm, I don't identify as Wiccan but uh they're mostly like it's really that they're just it's boys and girls they're they are earth center they go with the seasons all that goes up anyway so it's been on my list it's always on my list like try to find a um spiral scouts chapter or like start one I did look there's not one in Connecticut period <laughs> so I keep I keep it's like on my list spiral scouts to start a chapter which it was probably crazy because like I have time for that but um but that would be community how am I giving back how am I establishing community so it can look it can be like your direct community but how you're giving back to community also or like if you volunteer or something like that like I would love to um my husband and I are always home together and so I would love for us to volunteer to like drop off meals on wheels or something because we could totally do that locally and make that happen and just like throw the kids in the car and they would probably love it too. So things like that, like how are you contributing to community? Hey, Alethea. Um, or is it Alethea? Do I say your name wrong? Alethea, Alethea. You'll have to tell me if it's Aya or Ia. So Heather says that we have Spiral here. Yeah, I think there's like two communities in Connecticut, but they are, um, they're single. It's just their family, you know, like they're not groups. They're established as just them. Um, so I keep saying to like start up a Spiral Scouts community <laughs> and I'm like, that's crazy. Like I need to find a friend to start it and then I'll just be their helper. <laughs> um, <laughs> here's looking at you, Nick and Anna. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's community, like giving back. MJ says we had one here, but it's no longer going. Yeah, I think they need, um, I've actually thought about too, of volunteering for Spiral Scouts, um, uh, like their larger organization with like marketing or something to help spread the word. But I just got to carve out some time to make it happen. And maybe I'll reach out to them because I know they were looking like last year. Anyway, so go through these family and friends, love, creativity, spirituality, career and money, lifestyle, community, and self-care. Where are you really abundant in these areas? And then in my black pen, I'll go through and think of what I need to heal. So I don't want to look at this as lack though. Like I don't want to look at it as, oh, I don't have community. I don't have money. What needs to be healed in that area? So if it's... Um, if it's money, like for me, I am always like, this is, it's a, I'm a conundrum because I don't have any problems spending money. I have no problem spending it in like, um, doing things or like when it comes to business, I have no problem. Like, like with the mugs that they're actually like a ton of money to buy them up front. And I have no problem doing that. But I also have this fear that I'm never going to have enough money, which is weird because I have no money. I have no problem investing it in things. But then I'm also afraid of not having it. And it stresses me out and I get anxious and I worry and I panic. Um, and so that would be something that needs to be healed is this like fear around money, right? Um, well, I guess fear around money for me because I don't mind investing it or spending it on other things. But then like I don't like to spend it on myself, I guess. Anyway, so there's fear there. Um, let's see here. Like what else would be fear for me? Um, self care. Um, something that needs to be healed in that area is, uh, putting myself first. 
So I'm not looking at lack. Like I'm not looking at this and saying, I, I don't have time to self-care. Nobody helps me do with self-care. No, I don't have enough help to take time. I'm just looking at the, like what needs to be healed and here putting myself first, the idea of putting myself first so that, you know, I am well rested so I can better take care of other people that needs to be healed. So not lack, we're not looking at lack. It's a, I think like a fine line there between lack and what needs to be healed because like if it's a, if, if it's something you lack or you're afraid of lack, it needs to be healed, but we don't want to look at, we don't want to focus on the lack. <laughs> we want to focus on the healing and like what joy will feel on the other side of healing, which ideally will lead to less lack in that area. Um, so those are some examples for me. Um, let's see here. Um, friends and family. So something that needs to be healed here is me putting aside time for friends and family. Um, I guess, yeah, like scheduling that in. So anyway, so I would go through these and then so I have like the topic and then I have what's like abundant in green, uh, what needs to be healed in black. So then looking at all of this, you can sort of, you can pull cards, you can meditate on it, you can journal on it, like bring it all together. And then in the center of it, what you want to do is use this all together to come up with your intention for either 2019 or for one lunar cycle or for a quarter or like a half year. You can break it down as much as you want. You can do this and look at like the whole year. But then after you look at the whole year, I would break it down to like, what's your next lunar cycle intention? Because if we look at this whole big year thing, that again, it's very looking at a year ahead, that's very solar, it's very outward, it's very action oriented. And a lot of what we need to heal, it's very inward. That's that's moon stuff. It's it's the moon shines on your your inner self, your highest wisdom, your all this like, you know, subconscious stuff, the shadow stuff, that's, that's lunar aligned. So we can look at our, our solar goal, which is kind of our intention for the whole year. And then look at like, okay, what's a little, again, a little piece of this that I can heal right now, or I can start working on um, that kind of covers a lot of these bases and make that be a lunar intention. And we have the new moon on, um, it's Saturday, the 5th, Sunday, the 6th. I think it's like, it's, in, it's this weekend. So um, it's also a partial solar eclipse, right? So it's like uh, extra powerful. Ecl the thing about eclipses, we hear a lot about eclipses. We're gonna be like, there's like four eclipses or something coming up. And you, so you'll hear a lot about them. Be like, it's the most powerful eclipse of whatever. That's what, there's always these headlines. It's the most powerful for manifesting. And it makes me want to pull my hair out. Because <laughs> I'm like, seriously, someone's going to write that blog post like eight times this year. And be like, there's this, this, and this. And it's the most powerful for this. And I'm like, really, any day that you get out of bed and live your best day is the most powerful day for you. Um, but uh, <laughs> that's a, a tangent, a rant, a Sarah rant. Um, but anyway, it is is a partial solar eclipse this weekend and so with eclipses tends to be a uh just a, a a highlight of whatever it is that's going on for you like more sort of energy so setting this intention this weekend there's just gonna be like that little boost of energy behind it right um and a little more focus on it all that good stuff uh so this is a partial solar eclipse this weekend and our partial lunar what am i talking i don't even know what day is it i don't know where i am or what i'm talking about um but uh astrological events this weekend new moon so take your solar intention for the year ahead and break it down into a smaller lunar intention to set this weekend and then work with that over a lunar cycle um so yeah, Nick, I was saying you and Anna, one of you can start a spiral scouts community and I can be your assistant. <laughs> Melissa says, I really struggle with wording when it comes to intentions and affirmations. So a lot of people do. And I think it's this um, idea that we want to get it right or that we're somehow going to do something wrong. Um, and so with affirmations and intentions, keep it short. Um, there was something floating in my tea. I don't know what it was. And I just consumed it so let's hope I don't know what it was let's hope it's not something horrible <laughs> um keep them short uh keep them short keep them positive so like when we look at um um so big ones are always money and we look at when we say things like de being debt free getting out of debt 
I want to spend no money. Those are all negative, right? There's negative words in there. Debt, um, like no, spend none, spend nothing. Those are lack sort of terms. So keep it short, keep it positive. So you might want to say something like, um, I feel, um, I feel confident about my bank account. I feel confident in my money skills. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know what it is. I'm going to take another sip because it's kind of in my throat. I saw it floating in there, but I had like one minute to get here. So <laughs> I was like, it's fine. It's going to be great. <laughs> um, partial solar eclipse, Nick says. Yeah, so I was right. Okay. Um, so with money, like I feel confident about my money skills. I feel confident about my purchases. I love the things that I love the things I bring into my home. So for, or I love the things I bring into my life. So for like not wanting to spend any money, instead of saying, I don't spend any money or I don't buy things I don't need. I love the things I bring into my life. Um, or I love, I love the things and experiences because experiences are money also, right? So I love the things and experiences I bring into my life. Or I only bring the best um, things and experiences into my life. Helene says financially free. Yeah, like that word free, that's a really good word. I am financially free. Um, so focus on keeping it short, keeping it positive. Uh, an intention is really feelings based. So like if your goal is to, so if you look at all this and for me, I can already tell you that self care is like always a huge thing, but it's such a big term. So taking care of myself in 2019, self love, self care, that's a big solar thing because what does that even look like? You know, one day that can look like one thing one one day can look like this thing. So that's my, that can be my solar thing for 2019. But what's my immediate lunar intention going to be for this lunar cycle? I haven't thought about it yet, but um, if I were to sit down and think about it, this is kind of what it would look like. I would look at all of this and think, well, what's one thing I can do right now? Um, considering how my life is right now, I'm certainly not going to work on the community piece. <laughs> I'm not going to be reaching out to Spiral Scouts because that would set me up for failure. Um, like, like, what things could I do right now? I could work on putting aside time um, for myself or I could schedule in like a coffee date for a friend, but how would those things make me feel? I would probably feel uplifted, right? If I had time for myself, if I had a fun, enjoyable coffee date with a friend, which I used to do a lot and don't do anymore, um, I would feel joyful, I would feel uplifted, I'd be smiling. So my intention for this lunar cycle could be to feel uplift, uplifted. So my intention is to do things that make me feel uplifted. And then I could look at, well, what are those things? And then brainstorm some things and schedule them into my calendar and, and do that over a lunar cycle. And then at the next one, I can be like, all right, so I'm feeling uplifted. Um, what's the next piece of my solar goal, my, self, my solar self-love goal? And what can I do to heal a little piece of me? What's that going to look like? And what's the intention? So intentions, um, more feelings based versus numbers based, tangible based. So how will I know that I'm showing myself self care at the end of 2019? That's very solar. What's that going to look like? Well, I will know that because I won't be um, working like right now I work very part-time during the day because I still take care of my kids a lot which means I work a lot at night when I want to relax and do other things um, so for me like that would be my tangible thing it will look like me not working at night <laughs> seven nights a week like maybe only three nights a week I do that it will look like me taking you know scheduling a full day off every week like that's what that will look like those are those tangible things and that's very solar so how will i know that i'm doing self-care what's the solar idea of that that's my tangible stuff um and then the inner stuff that's going to get me there that's that lunar stuff those are those feelings based intentions and then acting based on how we want to feel and making choices based on how we want to feel uh, and then with affirmations, which are a little bit different, those are kind of things you can use to power yourself forward. But again, uh, focus on positive and short because then you'll remember, you'll be able to say it. So like the intention can be um, to like uplifted, to feel uplifted. And my affirmation could be, I make choices that leave me feeling uplifted or um, I go to bed every night feeling uplifted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like that can be the affirmation. So the intention is to feel uplifted. And my affirmations around that can just basically be like, I go to bed feeling uplifted. I make choices that make me feel uplifted. The people in my life make me feel uplifted. Um, all, all that good stuff. So 
I hope that helps with that. My foot's going to sleep. Move around over here. Um, so yeah, Jamie Jo says she loves this color. This is lilac. This is the original, the Sisters Enchanted one. We also have one that says Enchanted Sister with a little witch hat in this color. So um, yeah, we're counting and sorting and packing and uh, and all that. They should all be in the mail. Today is Wednesday, so anybody who ordered one, no, today's Tuesday. Anybody who ordered one, they will all go out by Friday. Um, we had to order more boxes, <laughs> we had a shortage of boxes, which we thought we had more of, but it turned out they were like flat rate boxes. They weren't the right boxes. <laughs> so uh, they will, we ordered them. They're just like overnight delivery, so they'll be here. Um, but we're packing and shipping them out. Um, okay, let's see here. Yeah, Nick, I should have brought you yours today. Um, we went for a walk with Nick and Jacob today, my fam jam and them uh, at the state park, the beach nearby, and saw somebody riding their horse on a beach while walking their dog at the same time. It was very windy. The waves were crashing. And it was very, um, it was very like therapeutic to hear the waves until the wind came up so hard that it threw sand in all of our faces. <laughs> we were like, oh no, abort this mission. We need to go back. We need to go back. Um, Happy New Year, Emily. Let's see here. Um, yeah. All right. So that is your task. And I will kind of try to type up like an exc explanation of this. Or maybe make you a printable. Because we all know I love to make printables. Uh, and with directions. <laughs> on thinking about this magical healing for 2019. And we have those nine circles. Um, which is a very powerful three number, right? Three threes to make nine. And we know 2019 is our three number about joy, creativity, manifestation. Um, but remember, when you're not doing things that bring you joy and make you feel creative, then that's when we are going to see, we're going to get all these lessons that remind us we need to do that. So like for me, if I'm not doing things that bring me joy and not doing things that make me feel creative, then I'm probably going to get a, like um, a lot less help than I get now. Like people are going to be like, oh, Sarah can take on more and more and more. And uh, because I will get more of the lesson that I'm not learning. <laughs> so you need to step into your joy this year. Otherwise, you're going to get more of your lesson, right? And that depends on you and your numerology and like all this stuff, what your lesson might be. But um, anyway, so Melissa says, I think this may be my favorite free class. Yeah, wait until the the full class, Melissa. It starts on Sunday. We're going to have our first class. Um, we're talking about the first lunar cycle is about the 3D to 5D consciousness shift, which is um, like a big hot topic. And people talk about it. And I always have like, you know, I always shy away from like the very buzzy the sort of things. But um I love it because there's this idea that, you know, we live in this 3D world, right? Where we have our human fears or human emotions, this idea that like, we're working so hard, this can't be it. Um, and then the idea that living in a 5D consciousness is that um, we see that we're all connected, that we are all love. And that when we're living in this 5D place is when ultimate abundance comes to us. We release fear, we release judgment, which is a really hard place to live from. And there's this whole thing where people are talking about there's been a shift in consciousness, right? And there's all these people that are in 5D consciousness. And my argument against that is that it's very difficult to live in a state of 5D consciousness for like freaking ever because you are a human you're impacted by other humans so we're always going to find this like um expansion of ourselves where we're like totally expanding up to this other like dimension right but then something happens and we knock back down and then we need to heal another part of us where we can expand our bandwidth again um but i think that to say like that consciousness has that we like we're we're all like, you know, we've transcended to 4D and 5D consciousness, I think is like a really crazy thing to say because um, otherwise we'd all be monks, right? Which we're not. And <laughs> there's a reason for that. Um, 
Plus, you know, I think, in my opinion, I have a lot of fun being a regular human, not a monk. So, you know, there's this shift between it. But when we look at the, these levels of consciousness, that 3D to 4D to 5D, we are able to, like, see, well, where am I expanding? And then where am I, what's making me come back to 3D? And then what can bring me back up to this 5D? And, like, how can I sit, spend more time here and less time here? Um, and so that's our first month. The second month, we're talking... The sister wound, the mother wound, and the witch wound, which is also very buzzy. I'm just bringing all the buzzy things lately. Um, and there it's how we are uh, impacted by um, like our our kind of DNA level impacted, our attachments to our actual mothers and sisters versus societal mothers and sisters. Um, and all this really cool stuff, but how that can leave us with things we need to heal. And like a good example of that is when we see other, um, when we see other women, right? And we maybe feel jealous of the way they look, their relationships, what they have or something. And then we feel less than, or like we see these, these moms that have these like clean houses and these kids that appear to, I don't know, be very well behaved. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, you look at your own life and you're like, I can barely like get out of leggings every day and my kids just yell at me and they're very small. So what am I doing wrong? But these are these societal sort of wounds that can make us feel bad that we need to heal and move past. Um, but we're going to do that in like a magically centered way and look at the witch wound too, which is always my kind of favorite thing to talk about. And then the third month we are having guest teachers with different modalities of healing uh, my friend, one of my friends, uh, she does kinesiology, which is really cool. So um, I'm trying to get her scheduled in on a day. Um, of course, Rach Rochelle with her Reiki, it'd be great to have her come talk to us and her Akashic Records work. So I'm trying to bring in some of my friends that do healing work as guests to talk to us the last month and talk about different things you can do at home and like different tools you can use to heal, like the tarot, um, pendulums, crystals, but then also like different practitioners. Well, um, and that's our third month. And then of course we're having the deity chats in there. And then we're also going to do a virtual cacao ceremony, but not everybody wants to use cacao because of cultural reasons. And also it, you know, doesn't really taste that great unless you mix it with a lot of sugary stuff. So, um, you can have a moon water ceremony, a tea ceremony, cacao ceremony, um, and we can do it together, uh, virtually. So we're going to do so much cool stuff over the next three months in the heal like a witch class. So if you're already in that, get excited for that. And if you're not in it, you should sign up. The link is in the description up there. And for the new students, so not the previous students, the new students, you're getting um, little goodie packets in the mail too. I can't send it to everybody because there's like 400 of you. And that would just be, that's beyond me. But the new students will get these little packets. And um, and yeah, anyway, so let's see here. Um, Natasha says, life is a pendulum. Yeah. Uh, Melissa says that um, some kids are well behaved. What kind of witchery is that, right? I know. Oh, oh, I need some of that witchery in my life. I touched my phone and now it's falling over. So um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Natasha loves cacao. Do a mini ceremony with it each day. Yeah, I am like. Um, you know, I'm not like, uh, I feel like it's one of those, ugh, I'm losing my phone. It's one of those things that I, um, have like a love hate relationship with because I think that it's really amazing, but I love to make sure that like, I'm, uh, not like just adopting something into my life that I don't understand the traditions of and the background of. So I always like to really like dive in and explore things, um, and see where they come from, which being from a German, Irish, English background, cacao ceremonies aren't something that like would have been in my witchy lineage, right? Like nobody would have cacao ceremony. Like no one in my family even knows what that word is. Or they probably think I'm just saying cocoa weird, right? <laughs> Which is completely different things. Cacao versus cocoa. And they'd probably be like, oh, you mean hot chocolate? Let's do that. <laughs> um, but uh, so for me, like a tea ceremony is more like what would have been in my ancestral lineage, right? Which is why we're going to do the give the option. I am sending out the um, the four sigmatic cacao mixes, but um, it but people can have the option to do a tea ceremony, a moon water ceremony, or a cacao ceremony. Because um, I do like 
I do drink cacao. Um, obviously, I happen to have <laughs> it here. And like, uh, you can, we buy sometimes the, um, like the bulk ones too, the, um, what are they, the nibs or whatever. But anyway, that's a lot of effort and I don't usually want to put that effort in. But my point being is that magically speaking and intention speaking, my German Irish English ancestors would have probably had tea. <laughs> Not good go. So that's why we're doing the options for sure. Emily says, sounds awesome. Hoped, hopped on late and haven't been on tech about this. Is this a new class? Yeah, Emily, um, I think you're in Enchanted Journey. So there's a, should be a post in there. Um, and check it out. Gwen, there's a link up above in the description, which you might not be able to see till I get off. Um, but there is a, a, a link up there for it. It's three months and it starts on Sunday. So it's going to be good stuff. Anyway, um, so I'll put up, I will either type this up or something. We'll see how much time I have tonight because we're diving into these mugs. We're pulling them out. So I might not have time to get a cool printable done for you guys because um, I want to get those uh, mugs out. But I will at least type up like what this looks like so that you can do it yourself and share in the threads. And we're going to pick two winners um, for some, some um, prizes I'm going to send out for you guys. Um, Katie, did you get your email? Uh, Nikki was checking emails earlier today. So um, she might have, I don't know, I can look and see or ask her. Um, there you go, Emily, you're fine then. Um, but uh, Katie, we can, I'll check on that and see if there was something you needed. I will touch base with Nikki because I know she was in there earlier today shooting off emails. We have uh, lovely Nikki and Danielle now, who I've not introduced you to yet. Danielle also working in the background. Danielle is actually works in person with me here. And uh, the poor girl has been using a cutting board <laughs> as a lap desk and she needed space. So I yanked some of my old tutoring tables up from the basement today and created her a, a, a spot to sit at. <laughs> So, um, yeah, no problem, Christina. Anybody who's watching this in 2019 wants to grow like a business or something, no, it just this is a total tangent, but I'm just telling you this because I am working in a very small corner of what used to be my living room and is now my bedroom. And I built my first business um, in the car driving to people's houses. Then I had an office and wanted to work less. I had contractors and I was like, I don't want, this is too much for me. So I offloaded the office and the contractors, did it again from my living room with just a few tables and a very small space. And um, once again, I'm working in the same very small space. And uh, so you don't need a lot of resources. So chase those dreams in 2019. If you're like, oh, I need an office and I need things, you don't. Just find a corner and live in your corner. <laughs> this is my corner. <laughs> anyway, random tangent. Bring your joy to you in 2019, even if it's from a corner of what used to be a living room and is now a bedroom. You can do it. I did it. You can do it. I promise you. So Katie says, thanks. Be patiently waiting. Okay. So I'll see if there was something that needed to be checked into. Um, yeah. All right then. Thanks for hanging with us for Magical Healing in 2019. This is a wrap on this free class. Our next free class is going to kick off. It won't be for like another month or a little more, but um, it will be on astrology and you'll see a lot more of Nick and probably Anna too. I'm always going to get Anna to come on and talk to people. It's like, got to coax her out, but um, <laughs> with prizes or something. But you will be seeing and hearing a lot more about astrology coming up and learning about sun signs, moon signs, rising signs, how all of that comes together um, and all that cool stuff. So that will be the next free class. So um, stick around and you'll be hearing about that soon enough. Nick's like, yeah, I know we were just talking about it today. Uh, anyway, and in the meantime, be sure to check out our um, YouTube channel where you can find different video series on different things. And, um, you know, you can search here in the group for things all the time. People are always asking questions about tarot. We've got over, we've got like 200 tarot videos here in this group if you search them out. Um, so Melissa says, hey, does the Peacock Rust Mug come in the old design? It does not. And, and I think the Peacock one is sold out, which is interesting <laughs> because I was like really unsure of that color. Um, but we're going to do a, uh, like I said, we're going to, 
you guys should see my, you can't even walk through my door. There's, there are, I have a very small house and there are gigantic mug boxes. You don't even know how much space 240 mugs takes up because they're, you know, they're the handmade ones. They come in these big boxes with smaller boxes in them filled with packing peanuts so they don't break on the way here. Um, and they take, they're huge. So we're going to take them all out tonight and count each and every one, um, update the counts on the site and that, but it doesn't come in the old style. No, the old style, um, it was the same colors as before. Um, Emily wants to know, do all the free classes appear on the class site for ketchup? They don't. We used to have them kind of like that. Now we put them on YouTube as a series. That's the, the easiest way. Um, uh, the new woman helping out Danielle, one of her tasks is going to be to take all the printables and the videos and put them together in the Enchanted Journey class site. Um, but she has a very long to-do list, so I'm not sure when she'll get to that. But that is on the docket for the next few months anyway. For now, you can usually find them on YouTube as a series. Um, but like I said, we're going to try to put them together with the printables because I get those, I get requests for that a lot. So there you go. Um, Kimberly, the videos aren't going to come down. You can find them here or um, YouTube is probably the easiest place. So after I upload this one today, I'll make it a series on YouTube and you can find them there. And you just search us out, the sisters. It's youtube.com forward slash the sisters enchanted. And you'll see all of our video series is, I always don't know what to say, series, series is. I went to school to be an English teacher and I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Fear for your children. Um, all right, cool. So yeah, if you want to join us in Heal Like a Witch, it starts uh, on Sunday. The link is in the description and it's going to be three months of, I haven't been this excited for a class in a very, very long time. Um, I've really been excited about putting it together, getting all the guest stuff together, helping Anna with the deity chat and, um, like we're also doing, a, we're going to do like a small group thing too, where you can opt in to do like an optional small group along the way and like chat to chat with each other um, to like make sure you're doing the class material. Cause I know that can be really hard to actually like integrate it and use it and read it where you're like, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. And then you never do it. So uh, we're going to give you the option to like work together. Um, so it's going to be, I'm cause I haven't been this excited about a class in a very long time. <laughs> This and uh, and the business mastermind has been getting me super excited because I love talking with those women. Anyway, Desi says, oh no, I missed most. I will have to catch the replay. Yes, catch it. Uh, all right, that's it. I guess I should go tend to my family <laughs> and eat some dinner. It's now dinner time. Happy New Year to everybody. And um, I'll probably pop on a few times this week and just say hello as we prepare for the Heal Like a Witch class. And I will, we will pick um, some prize winners. I will probably by the end of like, I was going to say today, but we're going to put a thread up. So maybe the end of tomorrow or Thursday, but we'll, um, we'll announce it for you. Yeah. Study buddies. And if you haven't yet, you can check out our Facebook page. Um, not this group, the page and see Nick's astrology forecast for the week ahead. So we're already in the week, but you can go over there and see Nick's star speak forecast, um, right there on the page. I didn't email it out this week cause we were doing the, uh, free class. So you can find his star speak forecast right there on the page. And I did share it into the group, but you can find it easily on the page. And I think that is officially it. All right. Happy New Year, everybody. I hope to see some of you in Heal Like a Witch, where Anna, who's waving, will be chatting deity with us. Anna doesn't know it yet, but I am roping her into some kitchen magic <laughs> for month two. Um, and um, yeah, so making Anna do some more things for everybody in that class. So she's so, Anna's like so great. So anybody who doesn't know her, who's new here, she's my real life sister, and she is a walking mythology um encyclopedia knows tarot like the back of her hand and uh <laughs> and is a, a serious person in the kitchen like she can take a box of she can take like a packet of ramen and some random spices and you'd think you were eating five star food um which if I did it you'd be like you undercooked the ramen and didn't do the seasoning packet right <laughs> so <laughs> so she's great all right I'm off. I will see. I will look forward to seeing some of you in Heal Like a Witch so that I can mail you out a little goodie packet. So be sure to join for that. And um, yeah, Happy New Year to everybody. And I'll see you around in this group throughout this week, I'm sure. All right. Have an enchanted year ahead and rest of your day. All right. Bye, everyone.